Hi, I'm Sifu David, the Mind and Body Mentor, and we're going to talk about how to meditate, how do you meditate properly, how do you learn to meditate in this video. So stay tuned and let's get into that. So I have been meditating since I was 10 years old. And back then, I didn't even know that it was meditating. I was just doing it maybe because it was just a natural thing to do. Um, you can call it similar to prayer. You can call it similar to imagination. Um, but then I learned I was doing meditation since I was 10 years old. And it's only recently in the last few years that I've actually um, you know, trained and studied how to meditate. But I think meditation is a very natural thing because we feel um, naturally, we can feel forces beyond our person. We can feel forces beyond what we can see. So meditation helps us to connect with those forces on a, in a natural way. So I've studied different types of meditation, Qigong meditation from martial arts, uh, yogic meditation, Merkaba meditation, um, heart meditation, lots of different kinds of meditation that involves different things. And I found things that really work well together from different disciplines and different religions or different kinds of practices. So I've narrowed down meditation into three different aspects. So the first aspect is light. The second aspect is sound. And the third aspect is motion. So first, let's talk about light. What is light? Light is a frequency. And without light, we cannot see. And without light, we cannot see something as an object, as something is some, or such a color, or something is bigger, or something is smaller. We need light in order to give us the information in our brains, in order to see and be aware of what's around us. So one of the milestones of meditation is to be able to see without using your eyes. So what I mean by that is to see with your mind's eye, to use your mind's eye to be able to view um, such, a, such a thing. In everyday living, we have to use our eyes to see what's in front of us. We're looking at the computer screens, we're looking at our phones, we're looking at the road when we're driving. We open our eyes so that we can see. But then what happens is that we're using just the frontal lobe of our brains and all, our, all of our focus on the front part of our brains. Well, what we want to do is we want to get that awareness in, away from the front of our brains and move it to the back, move it back to the middle so that we have it in where our pineal gland is a pineal gland is actually um, the organ or the gland that produces luminescent um, chemical in your mind, in your brain. And the more you train and more you uh, activate your pineal gland, also known as your third eye or awaken your third eye, the more light you'll be able to see when you close your eyes. For example, when I'm sleeping or when I'm meditating, I have my eye mask on and turn all the lights off and I'm seeing all this bright light inside of uh, inside of my mind and I'm checking my eye masks and checking the lights and they're all the lights are all off and the eye mask is nice and secure there's no light leaking through they're nice thick eye masks it's at night time but I close my eyes I can see all this light all these colors so that's a good sign uh, my teacher tells me is that you're starting to activate your pineal gland and you start to create this new luminescent chemical that is actually secreting from your pineal gland in your brain these are real chemicals that come out of that gland in your brain. So that's one aspect of meditation is being able to be aware of light and not just the regular spectrum, rainbow spectrum of light that we see, but other spectrums of light and frequencies that we do not see. And the more you train it, for example, some people can see um, auras. Uh, for example, I can, I'm not that good at it, but sometimes I can see auras in people. Uh, sometimes the darker auras or brighter auras or even different colors of auras in people or even objects and or in your food or in your or in plants or in animals you have everything has an aura everything has an electromagnetic field and gives off an aura and um, if you have some people can are able to see these auras so the next aspect of meditation is sound how do you use sound in order to uh, increase your spiritual awareness well, in many different cultures and religions and practices, you see people chanting or you hear people chanting or singing or toning in order to uh, combine with their meditation. And what that does, it, it actually helps you, to, um, helps you to focus and concentrate. 
and also helps you to get rid of all other thoughts. For example, if you just follow me right now, you just go, Oh, oh. And if you do that for a few minutes, you feel that if you just focus on your voice, and focus on the sound of your voice, focus on the breath that you're taking, and focus on the breath coming out, you begin to start to um, lose all those extraneous thoughts that are happening in your mind and you begin to have more control over that monkey mind that keeps wanting to latch onto things. Um, so that's one way of doing it is just doing a simple chant when you are meditating in order to um, get focused and to um, get rid of the distractions that you may have in your mind, these thoughts that are running rampant in your mind. So that's one way of using the chants. There's also ways of using sound to raise your uh, energy level. For example, you can start uh, and then start going higher and higher with your voice. And that itself will raise your body energy level, raise your electrical level just by doing ho, 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 ho. It's a, basically, it's a um, vocal drill. Even singers use this, um, actors use this whenever they want to warm up. They would go from a low pitch and go ha 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 and then go up in tone like that uh, so that's one way of increasing your body energy why is body energy important you need to have this electrical energy running through your body in order to activate those chakras in order to activate your um, your organs and your glands that actually, and your brain and your pineal glands so all the organs need to work be working and all the chi needs to be flowing uh, and that's the base of starting to really be able to go and meditate deeply and to use those meditating organs and meditating um, devices in your body in order to reach, achieve higher levels of spirituality. So the next aspect of meditation is movement. And by movement, there's more than one kind of movement. So most people would think of movement will be just the movement of the hands. And you can see this in Tai Chi, you can see this in Qigong. You can see this in Qigong, right? You can see the movement. But then that's just external movement. What other kinds of movement are there? There's also the movement of breath. Okay? Because when you're breathing in, you have the movement of air into your body, and then you also have the movement of air out of your body. So that's also movement. And there's also another kind of movement that's very hard to see and you probably won't even see, is the movement of your consciousness throughout your body and the movement of your electromagnetic uh, um, pulses to your body. So if you study Qigong and you practice for a long time, you start to feel sensations through your body. For example, you can feel the heat in your hands. You feel tingling in your hands. You feel heat, heat throughout your body. You can feel tingling sensations through your body. Similar to Kundalini energy in the Kundalini Yoga. Um, you can feel the energies going up your spine, up your entire spine, up the back of your head and such. Um, so that you can train over time and that's movement that you can feel inside of your body. And that's movement that's not even uh, visible. So those are different kinds of movement and those are all very important in meditation to learn about movement. So what we do in Qigong, for example, is we make the movement outside so we can feel the movement. Okay, we make the movements outside of our body. We can see the movements. And now when we feel the, see the movements, we wanna combine it with the intention and awareness so for example, this is the Grand Tai Chi movement. I'm just making this big circle in torus shape with my hands. And as I'm bringing it down, I'm using my fingers to guide the energy and then change the awareness of where my energy is, where, as wherever my hands move. So when I move my hands up, I have my awareness up. I'm looking up at my hands. When it reaches my head, I feel it on my head and it reaches my nose. It goes down to my nose then to my neck, then to my chest, then to my solar plexus and my stomach and my hips and my legs, my knees and my toes. So from, by doing that, you are changing the awareness and then using your hands to guide that energy and guide that awareness. So once you do that a lot, for many, many days, many, many months even, then you can do it without even moving. You can just use your mind and experience the same awareness changing your awareness with just your mind without using your body 
and you can just move that energy through your body without having to move your body okay so now we go from the external external movement into the internal movement and the more you do that now you can start to control the movement of that energy through your body eventually you don't even need to be moving you can just be closing your eyes and be able to move the energy from different parts to, of your body from one part of your body to another so uh, if you want to learn more about that about the chakras and how that works just you can watch my video uh, about what are chakras and one way of using that technique is to be able to move the energy from chakra to chakra so in that video that i did uh, i talked about the uh, different purposes of the chakra and the locations of the chakras so the next level of um, that is eventually you want to be able to um, move energy from one chakra to another okay and different different um, directions too all right so that's uh, one major aspect of meditation is movement, being able to uh, feel the energies and be able to manipulate those um, energies throughout your body and throughout your mind, inside of your body. So here's a summary of what I just talked about. So from my experience, there are three main aspects of learning how to meditate. Um, light, being able to control what you see and vibrations and frequencies, light frequencies. Sound, which is also a frequency by the way, right? Sound waves are frequencies. How to control, how to manipulate sound in order to vibrate. Um, another thing I didn't mention was that sound, when you're humming, it actually uh, vibrates your nerves, vibrates your whole body, right? When you, you talk, whenever you sing, your whole body, body vibrates. And what that does is it activates a lot of the nerves, activates a lot of the chakras, simply because you're vibrating them, okay? So that's one way you can use sound too. And the third aspect, uh, as I said, was movement. And I also explained that movement is not just movement outside the body, but also movement with your breath, in and out of your body, and also movement of your intention and movement of your awareness and the electrical, uh, electrical um, field around your body. And later in higher level practices, you'll be able to move the electrical fields outside of your body too which I haven't been able to do yet, but one day I will be able to. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I, you probably have a lot of different questions about how to meditate. Uh, this is just an overview. And if you want to learn more about how to meditate, please like this video, make a comment, tell me what you want to learn about. Um, tell me what you think, what are your thoughts about this? And uh, share this with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more lessons on um, science and technology and meditation and spirituality all combined into one. So we'll see you soon in the next lesson. And yes, we're giving away these free DVDs, Ancient Qigong Secrets for Mind and Body. All you need to do to enter the contest is to subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell to get notifications of all the new lessons, and comment in the comment section and like this video and you'll be entered into the draw. Every week we're giving away a free DVD, so good luck.